All right, so I just forgot to complete my Jupyter notebook. So let's get <clears throat> so let's get back to our backtest model. Since I just created the plot here, so I have to go back to shoot this part. So I'm just showing how to calculate the profit here because I just do the last part and I forget to shoot the video. Okay, let's comment out everything. Um. We are going to create a column in our data frame in our table called PNL. Just call it profit and loss. Actually, it should be named portfolio value because it has two components. It has the cash balance and it has the unrealized portion of our portfolio. So the cash portion is easy. It's just the ending balance running total that we just did in our portfolio class and the unrealized portion is just the ending position multiplying the trade price let's say if we are going to calculate our profit on october 12th even though if we don't have any signal to buy or sell we just assume that we are going to buy or sell at the trade price which is the open price of the day that's why that's why we are going to multiply our ending position by the trade price and then we need to multiply the contract size in our case our contract size is one and our lot size is also one so one times one is one but in many other cases the contract size may be 100 shares per lot or like 500 shares per lot we need to multiply the ending position to get the exact number of shares that we hold or we need to sell. In case it is a positive one, it is a long position. So we assume that we are going to buy at this price. So in case if the ending position is negative one, then we are going to sell at the open price. And since if it is a negative one, times a positive number is going to be subtracted from the total portfolio value and we go back to our formula is the portfolio class dot n balance because we did that about multiplying the strategy class dot trade price and then we need to multiply the portfolio class contract size i'm going to graph from the data frame and we are specifying the column and rows by the dot look function so it's just like df dot load and then a square bracket is a row the range of row and a specific columns since we have like almost 2000 rows so i'm just slicing only the 1956 and the 1976 column so it's just the latest 20 days. We're going to use the square bracket to specify the columns that we are going to create. So let's say if I don't want trend day, so I'll just remove that. Okay, so before we press shift enter, just make sure you're just restarting the notebook. Go to cell and then run all. Okay. Just run all to make sure the code about is properly run. Oops, how come this one we don't get it? Oh, you know what? The position is a method. <laughs> and I just forgot to put it back. Contract size and the price are just instant, so it's okay. Oh, I know why. So then we go back and press shift enter. So this time is good. Okay, so that's the part we are going to. Okay, so we just finish off with the portfolio. In my Jupyter Notebook, I just don't have the module matplotlib. Let me install We that. go to Windows, go to Anaconda, and then I go to Anaconda Navigator. Okay, so first of all, we go to the application on and click the environment. If you're in root, then it's perfectly okay, but um, I think it has matplotlib installed already. But for my newly installed environment, my tray, I don't have that. After I click in my tray, I go to environments and then make sure I'm in my tray. And let me just search 
matplotlib under install matplotlib so make sure I don't have matplotlib then I go to all and then I click matplotlib just type it and then it's just click this one like this so I just take the matplotlib and then I go to the bottom right and apply oh yeah so we got all these items then we are going to apply and then it's going to install the package to our environment it's installing okay so our packages are installed so let's just go back to check if our environment my tray has matplotlib installed so i just type Matt. Okay, so I see matplotlib already. Okay, so then it's done. Shouldn't take long. Yep, very good. Then we get back to script. Our Jupyter notebook should be. Okay, so before that, since I have multiple cells, these are called cells. So I'm going to click cell and then run all. Okay just run all cell because I have to run going from top to bottom then I'm going to just reset the index so it doesn't matter because here okay so I just oops import mat plot lib dot i plot s prt and then just run the line mat plot lib inline just to show the graph inside Jupyter notebook and I just create new data frame called DF DF1 equals DF dot set index. Whoops. Because I want my okay, yeah, should be this one. So I set it to date because our data frame, which is this one, DF, I just extract several columns here. And I want the column date to be the x axis. So let me see. So let me call in PN, print pnl equals the table and then the column column name right the column name and then i plot just dot plot so i change the table to what to the f1 and the column name i just want to show the profit and loss that's the one I just created before. So it's P N L. P N L. Okay. Then I want to show. So I just plot dot show print P N L. The variable we just defined here. We are going to plot the profit and loss of our back test with date to be the x axis. Press Shift Enter. You know what? <laughs> Typo again. Index. Some of the word characters. So, okay. So we do that again. Shift enter. Wow. How come? Oh, plot dot show. Oh, you know what? <laughs> Even though it doesn't define, it's still plotted. But it doesn't matter because it's not plot dot show. It is plt. Because I forgot. The dot plot is a method inside matplotlib and the plot it's the abbreviation of matplotlib. We use the matplotlib's function dot show function to print the print pnl variable, which is the column pnl of the f1 table, applying the function dot plot. Okay, so let me just press shift enter. That's the one. So we start off with let's check our portfolio so we start off with a hundred thousand dollar you see this initial cash the earning balance oh you know what <laughs> i forgot to multiply the contract size but it doesn't matter because it's one like that's so we're still making money one hundred dollars so that's how we did for apple if we follow the moving average crossover strategy okay so that's basically it. Hopefully it helps.